Happy Thursday. Thank you so much for clicking. As you know, on Thursdays, we take a look at our upcoming weekend's gospel reading. And this is a reading that I like quite a bit. Been thinking about it a lot this week since teaching on it on Tuesday morning to my dear X class. A lot to love, but I found you a little piece. Won't give away too much about the coming weekend. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. This is a great reading, really. Jesus stands up, reads from the Isaiah scroll, tells them that what they have just heard is not, they're not just ancient words to listen to, but he says, this is being fulfilled in your hearing today, meaning he is the fulfillment of these Old Testament prophecies, the work that he does who he is. Pretty incredible, really. In addition to that, he then begins to talk with them about how they will reject him, just in the same way as the people of old rejected those prophets. That he would teach, he would heal, as the prophets always have, but then he'll be rejected just the way that those prophets were. So the sermon turns kind of sour, ends on a tough note though I've never been walked out to the brow of the hill, almost pushed down, um, did happen to our Lord. So if it does happen to me one day, I'll count myself in good company. But more importantly, what I wanted to focus on about that little verse is simply this. I don't know. Sometimes I just see a phrase and it just strikes me as unusual or interesting. And I just like that phrase, that he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. And maybe if you think about Jesus primarily as a very religious guy, that he had the custom of regular synagogue attendance on the Sabbath day, maybe it doesn't strike you as unusual at all. But I do have to admit that a little bit, it strikes me as odd. If you think about Jesus as true God, of course, he's both true man, true God. Jesus is the walking, living, breathing temple of God on earth. He is the presence of God here with his people. And yet, he still takes time to worship, and he still takes time to pray. That's something I've noted before in the Gospels, that sometimes Jesus has to walk away from the work of teaching and healing in order to be himself spiritually rejuvenated in conversation with the Father. And so that strikes me as pretty good spiritual advice for the rest of us. If God in the flesh needs to spend time in prayer, doggone it, you and I most definitely need to spend time in prayer. If God in the flesh can take a chunk of his weekend to be in the house of his father. That's a good idea for you and me too. We're still near the beginning of a new year. Maybe you have some resolutions that have uh, dropped away already. One resolution we can make every year, every week, every day is to be more frequent, more frequently attentive to God's word, more frequently in the house of God. If Jesus could make time for it, it certainly seems reasonable that you and I can too. A reminder, we don't come to the house of God to be entertained. We don't come to the house of God because it's fun. We come to the house of God because we need it. We need to be gathered close to him, to be reminded of his holiness, to be reminded of the forgiveness that we are given freely because of Jesus, his son, our savior, and then to be set free, unleashed back into the world toward our lives, ready to serve and love in the name of God. Prayer I grabbed for today's devotion comes from our hymnal, as I always do. This one doesn't have a page number because it's right on the inside. Open it up. They've got some nice prayers there before communing, before hearing God's word. This one is simply called Before Worship, and I like it. Let's close with it. O Lord, my creator, redeemer, and comforter, as I come to worship you in spirit and in truth, 
I humbly pray that you would open my heart to the preaching of your word so that I may repent of my sins, believe in Jesus Christ as my only Savior, and grow in grace and holiness. Hear me for the sake of his name. Amen. Have a great day. As always, thanks for clicking, and see you soon.